It seems like the new hip trend in Nerf videos is to open up packages you've gotten from other Nerfers, and I plan to board that cool train, get down with it, by opening up a package I've gotten from Alice Coat Duck from the great white northern territory of Kanukistan. She sent me this package and told me to open it up on video, which I can only think is for nefarious reasons, but I have not opened this, and you're gonna join me for the ride, so let's get it open. Ooh, there is a lovely note that reads, Dear Bobo Lobo Bobo Bobo Lobo 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 Liberty Dubly Lobo 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 Lick My Butt Love Alice Included are four Rapid Strike Strife version 5 cages, one clear Strife motor cover, one Raven cage version 6.1, two Strife mag releases, one modulus cage version 6.1, one battery cover, which is for Strife, and a Rapid Strike uh, Strife V 6.1 cage. There's a lot of stuff. Um, Money shot. Oh, P.S. I just realized they gave you everything for a top tier stripe. Name it LMB for <laughs> lick my butt. Guess I have to now, Alice. <laughs> We're going to take a look at all the flywheel cages at once because they all have the same sort of features put into them. These are the version 5 Strife Rapid Strike cages, the Raven cage, Modulus cage, and the version 6.1 Rapid Strike Strife cages. I'm going to turn these two over down here so you can get an understanding of what's going on uh, underneath of them because they all kind of look the same underneath. The first design feature that really stands out to me are these holes in the middle of the cages and you'll see on this one that the holes get as close to the middle of the flywheel as possible without getting into the, the motor holding shaft port, whatever you want to call it. And this is related to something Make Task Battle talks about when it comes to removing your flywheels. On the stock cages, there are these little holes in the bottom of the stock cage and they take two screwdrivers, push them up through the holes and that's how they pop their flywheels out. Um, Alice has implemented a way to put screwdrivers through her cages so you can do it in the same sort of manner. I usually use pliers to pull off my flywheels. I grab them by the nub and just yank. But if you want to do it in the way that Make Test Battle says to do it, I guess it's a, a better way overall, you can now do it with Alice's cages. Another feature are the holes right here where the motors go. And while these cages do have a very tight fit on the motor, um, you don't need to screw them in. You do have the option with these holes. In the RC world, you usually screw your motors into place and that's what you can do with these holes. It allows you to screw your motors down for a little bit of extra hold. I don't think it's necessary because these motor holding areas are pretty tight to the point where I will have to sand a couple of them and get them fine tuned. But uh, if you like that option, if you wanna use that option, you definitely can with these motor cages. The other feature to these flywheel cages has to do with this piece right here, and this is your brass cutter. You slide your brass in, you cut out the area that's exposed, you sand it down a bit, and the brass will fit nicely around your wheel so the wheels aren't just, you know, running into it, grinding into it, and you're basically ruining your flywheels. So that's a nice thing that she's done, especially with a little brass cutter, because some people like to be guided, they like it to be precise, um, and that will do it. Besides the stuff I've gone over, I'm not entirely sure if there's any other sort of like hidden benefit stuff added into this, uh, things that I'm not seeing. So if Alice would be kind enough to leave a comment in the comment section, I can pin it and she can tell you what all she's done to these cages that really make them stand out and all the benefits that go with them. Maybe I'm missing some stuff, but I don't know. But yeah, that is the flywheel cages. And these are the last three items that came in the package. We have a clear strife cover, a battery tray cover, and a tiny little mag release. Uh, let's start with the clear cover. So the point of this is to show off your really cool motor cage or your motor combo, or just to give a glimpse to the inside of your strife. So this opening right here goes over the motors. If we flip it over, she's actually done something that I'm really happy she did. She added this part right here, which covers up the big gap that's left in the strife if you decide to cut out all the area needed to show off what's inside your strife, which is great because uh, on a strife I'm building right now, I had to fill this area up with epoxy putty, sand it down, make it kind of blend in and stuff. So I'm really happy to see that she added this little, uh, I guess, cover area to block off that big gaping hole, which is a really nice feature. So thank you, Alice. Other than that, this is just like other 180 Strife motor covers. It gives you a bit of height, so your 180s and the wiring that go with them can fit nicely, and it adds an opening so you can look at the sexy cage you put in it, like an artifact cage or a Dr. Snickers cage. Um, I love 180s, so I buy a lot of 180 covers, but that's that. This little guy is an extended Strife mag release. For those of you who do not like stock Strife releases, 
like myself, this is for you. Say you don't want something as long as the Gavin Fuzzy release, which are the only ones I've been buying so far because they are awesome. But if you don't want all the length, Alice says to give this one a try and I'll probably like it, which I believe her on, but I will have to give you a report on how well I like it in the future when I make a Strife with all the parts that I've received in this package. So that is an extended Strife mag release. And the last item is this Strife battery tray cover, which adds some height so you can put bigger batteries for longer gameplay and maybe a bit more power into your Strife. This one has nice uh, angles on the side that provide a soft look while also being very stylish yet simple. I think it's called a chamfer. I could be completely wrong. I'll have a little thing down here if I am, but in terms of woodworking, I think it's chamfer, but who cares? One of the designs of this cover that I really like are the little feet right here. On a lot of the ones that I've bought, there's either this kind of build up angle of uh, filament, or they just feel very, very weak to the point where I've actually had to drill into them and fill them with epoxy, just so I know they had a bit more sturdiness to them. But overall, the Strife LiPo cover is very simple, yet uh, nice looking. There's no sharp edges, which I like a lot, and it looks like it will go well with the Strife. Not too bulky, but enough room regardless. So there you have it. That was a look at the very cool stuff sent to me by Alice Coat Duck in this little nifty package. And what makes this package a bit more awesome is while I did pay for some of these parts, she threw in a bunch of freebies, which is just very cool of her to do. If you're interested in checking out her channel, I will have a link in the description below, as well as in a little clickable thing in the end cards of this video. I think she's going to be selling some of the stuff in the near future. So if you want to get your hands on some awesome 3D printed parts from Coat Duck, uh, her channel will have all the information there when that time comes but for now I hope you enjoyed this video and as always have a great day wherever you are